Hi, this video will show how to handle Simulink parameter precision loss diagnostics. The process is simple. You first review each of the diagnostic warnings related to precision loss. In the rare case when the precision loss is actually bad, then you would correct the model. Otherwise, if it's fine, then you'll just suppress it so you won't have to keep dealing with that warning over and over again. Okay, so we have a model here, and we have many parameters being passed into these constant blocks. And so let's go ahead and simulate that model. And we see that we've received several warnings, three in fact. So if we go look at the first one, we see that we've entered 0.05 and it's giving us a warning about it not being precise. It's going to the data type single and it surprises a lot of people, but the 0.05 is not going to be perfectly precise when going into single. So let me give you a little background on that, a kind of a review. So here we have in this live script, I'm showing the ideal value 1 over 20, and we've quantized that. First, we've quantized it into double, and double cannot perfectly represent 0 0.05, so this value is actually quantized. It's a little bit off from the perfect value 1 over 20. And if we go into single, it's a little further off because single has fewer bits to represent that precisely. And to dive in that a little more closely, let's look at this plot down here. So here we have an input of double, and the output is going to single. And single is less than precise than double, so we have the classic quantization staircase here. So all the values from here to here quantize to this value there. So the 0 0.05 quantizes to this value, which is a little bit different. And here we've subtracted the difference between the quantized value blue and the ideal dotted line. And we see classic uh, quantization errors where we get up to half an eps of error. And so even when going to single, you will see quantization when going from double to single. So it is to be expected that most a high percentage of double values when you enter them and quantize to single, you will see a diagnostic warning. So you, you will see a lot of these if you're using anything but doubles in your model. So you should expect that. Similarly, with fixed point types, you're going to see quantization errors. Here we have a 32-bit one, which is actually does more precise than single. And as we start reducing the bits, we're getting more and more quantization error. In all cases, it's within a half a bit of error, uh, and in most cases, that's to be expected. Okay, so that was the background information, so let's come back to this model again. So here we have 0 0.05, which was entered like this, which by default in MATLAB, that's a double, so this value needs to be quantized to the actual runtime data type of single, so that's where that precision loss came from, as we saw in that figure, there's, there's a slight difference. So this one is benign, so in this case, we don't want to keep seeing this warning over and over again. So here we can use this suppress capability, and we'll make this diagnostic here go away permanently. So that one has been suppressed, so if we rerun this simulation, Now we see there's only two diagnostics. And so now if we skip down to the next one, here we see that we have 0 0.05 quantized to this fixed point type. And we see that there's a small quantization error, which again is to be expected. So here what I've done is I've used, I've entered the value, the original value, as a double, assigned it to the variable v, just as the way it was entered on the dialog. So again, by default in MATLAB, that's quantizing to a double. I mean, it is defaulting to a double. And then I've called this phi object constructor, fixed point object constructor. I've passed in the original value, 
And then I've passed in a numeric type objects saying what type I wanted. And you may not be aware of this, but one of the ways to do the construction is to pass in the name that appears on the simulate signal line, and that will specify the correct data type. And this will quantize it, and we'll have that in a phi object. And a nice feature of phi objects is that you can say dot value, and that will show you a very precise representation in decimal of the value. So here we can see the original, and here's the quantized one, and that was expected. So here, instead of using the name 0 for unsigned, 8 for 8 bits, and 12 for the fraction length, and again we get the same results. So fixed point objects can also hold floating point types. So here we can see the details on that, and again that was a benign one. Okay, so let's come back to here, let's simulate again. And there are two warnings. So this first one is this one, and we can suppress that. Now let's go investigate this one. So this one, okay, let's analyze that at the command line again. Okay, so it's 0 0.51 this time and going into an int 8. And so we see 0 0.51 versus 1. That's nearly 100% relative quantization error which is pretty big. So that this is the rare case when you want, want to take a closer look. And so now when I look at this, I realize, ooh, I made a mistake. I was trying to deal with percentages, and I did the classic mistake of do you multiply by 100, divide by 100, leave it the way it is, and I goofed. So I made a modeling error. So I've corrected my modeling error, and now if I simulate again, there are no more diagnostic warnings. And if I save this now, those suppressions of the benign warnings are gone, and I will never have to look at those again unless I want to. If I wanted to restore it, I could go like this, click return, and that would bring the warning back that had been suppressed on that block. As we saw, most of the time, the diagnostics are benign in terms of parameter precision laws. So you might want to think about completely turning that off. For example, if you've taken a model that was in double, you've converted it over to single precision, you may see lots and lots and lots of these precision loss warnings because there's that small error when going from a double to a single. And that might be not worth your time to look at those. So in that case, you could just come here and say none and suppress all those. Uh, permanently turn that off. But you'll notice there's still diagnostics for if there was a parameter overflow, which is the case when the normal case when you have a really big error. You can also have a diagnostic for underflow, which was when you had a non-zero value that could quantize to zero. So you might want to leave that one on. So that can help you catch the big errors and you don't have to spend a lot of time on the little errors. The, the insignificant errors. But if you do want to keep it as a warning, as we showed, you can use the suppressor to get rid of the individual ones that are not helpful to you. Okay, that's it. Thank you for listening.